Okay guys, so in this video I am going to walk you through utility classes, so let's get into it. So first and foremost we're going to cover what a utility class is and how we make them and some examples of how they can be used. So you can think of a utility class in CSS as just a class that holds usually a very limited amount of properties that performs some type of styling and it's the what we like to think of a cross-cutting style. Now the the meaning behind cross-cutting is that there's no really semantic association between this style and other components on your page. So it's something that can pretty much be applied to any element. A classic example is that you want to float something to the left or to the right and then usually you have some type of class called float left or float right or pull right or pull left and so forth. And then things like display none, like is things like is hidden stuff of this nature right so these are the common cases for utility classes and that's that's pretty much it really but you can also have the approach that you actually use utility classes to build your entire application and in this video I'm going to show you an approach to doing this but you should also know that this is a bit like this is the extreme case this is a like a proven way of doing your CSS architecture so let's have a look at it First and foremost, we have my little simple server here, which is just going to grab some data and render out a static web page, basically. And here is the data, just some basic content. We can actually look at the application before we go anywhere. So I have this little header here and all of these lovely ladies and their clothes and a bit of a footer going here. So that's pretty much it really and then I have oh, like we can just look at my configurations here so I'm using post CSS and I'm using post CSS imports and then I have the extend rule we'll touch on that in just a moment what that's all about here's my configuration my package JSON and here are here's my output uh, this is actually the, the, the dist outputted uh, CSS file so we don't need to look at that just now but let's look at my rendered file here. So basically this is the markup. And here are all of my CSS files. Now the way that I usually structure this is that I have a entry file which is called main CSS and then I pretty much import all of the CSS styles that are associated. So the way like there are many patterns to doing a like, utility class develop like the utility class first approach. I'm just going to show you a way of doing it. You can invent your own patterns and so forth and I'll just show you one that I've used in the past that has worked fairly well. And so the idea here is basically that you group things based on the property name itself. So, and then there are of course things that are a little bit cross-cutting, but if we, for example, look at text here, you see that the naming convention, because that's what it really boils down to. So usually you have this idea of a, well, it's not a hard rule that there should be one styling property to every utility class. But what you're going for is the smallest utility class that you can possibly make so that you build up a library of blocks. And you can think of these classes as small blocks that you compose together in order to create more sophisticated styles. And this is pretty much the pattern here. So usually you have some very common properties that you use over and over and over and over time as you add more of these you finally have enough utility classes to like basically compose all of this together into something much more complicated and as you can see I mean it's not a hard rule that you don't only have one property but you, you your goal is to create the smallest possible block you can because when you compose them together you can actually cr produce more sophisticated layouts just by having having these tiny little blocks but of course uh, you ha you would have some global styling and I mean I have some variables here so here as well so it's not like it's a fairly loose way of doing this like there's no like you can kind of do what you want I'm just gi giving you the approach so basically if we have a look here at the markup we can see here the first thing is that okay so in order for me to create this layout up here like these elements here what I'm basically doing here is that I'm using my utility classes and I'm pretty much moving all of my tiny little utility classes into the, the selectors into the markup and this is a bit of a contrast I mean if you're paying attention and you know CSS you might actually see a pattern here so if we look at this color black font family header 
font weight lighter, color red hover, text decoration none. So this is my composition of all of these different classes, right? And what basically this is, it's the same thing as if I would have set a class saying <clears throat> something like list element, and then I would simply move all of those properties into that element, and then I would be done with it. Now the benefit of this is that if I declare a one of these styles, I have I can have this limitation that I only express myself through these styles, which makes it a lot easier to be consistent with my styling. Because one of the problems that usually happens when you're just using CSS as normal is that first and foremost you get some type of collision, like name collision somewhere, and this is pretty much solved by having this convention about namespacing your your tiny little classes or your blocks, if you will, into these property names and then basically just adding on to whatever is needed in order to express what the, the styling that you're actually creating. Like if you have that limit, like have that limitation or that convention, it's fairly easy to avoid the namespace collision. And the second thing is to be consistent because when you, uh, as things move on, it's very hard for you to figure out if like how to be consistent is it's very common that you find people copy case copy pasting like color values and stuff of that instead of reusing colors that already exist so you get a lot of duplication and a lot of inconsistencies but this approach to writing css is actually very good to avoid that sort of problem now the issue with this is as you can i mean for some people this feels very unwieldy and i'm not gonna lie there's gonna be a for large project that there's gonna be a ton of these different selectors one benefit that I think is really nice about this is that if you fit, follow these conventions, it's very easy to discover whether or not something is used and how the scope of things are. So if you ever in doubt if something is actually being used in your project, it's very easy for you to kind of just grab pretty much any selector and just have a little bit of a search and find all the references to that selector and it's fairly easy for you to change them so it's a it's a I, I will say that this is actually a very flexible system of working even though there's going to be quite a lot of uh, well a fairly large amount of these tiny little blocks now Something that also is worth noting is that in order to mitigate a little bit of this issue here, because I mean, some people kind of look at this and they kind of go irk because there's, I mean, this is a still a very simple style. Like this web page is, it's a pretty, pretty simple page and on really large applications, it's going to be even more selectors and like more classes than this, right? So in order to mitigate that problem, if you really want to go down this route, because I, the benefit that I see to this approach is that when you're just starting out and kind of just putting things together, it's a very efficient way to just ad hoc things together and to build up like a composition fairly, fairly quickly and being, and being able to be very, very consistent. But once you have something like this, it's starting to feel a little bit painful because basically what you're doing is that you're moving your most of your properties from a single class into multiple classes and then you're simply bloating your HTML. And that's usually the trade-off here. Either You can either put your quote-unquote bloat into CSS files or you can put it into the HTML. And this problem you see here is that your HTML will be very unreadable at some point. It's very likely that you're going to have a lot of stuff here. Now, the way that I mitigate this issue, if I want to go down this route, is to do something like this. And that's uh, this thing here. So if you find that you're seeing that, all right, I have this element and I have a good name for it, I can express that fairly easily. And I, this is pretty much this element here, nav list. What you can do is that you can actually declare a component for yourself and simply copy paste all of the select all of these classes that you're using in order to create the styling for that specific element and then you can do this where you can basically just extend the base block like the and this is why it's so important to keep these as small as possible because if you're going to extend them what you really want here is to just compose together these utility classes into a higher higher class if you will but without actually breaking breaking this pattern of using these small little classes and the a good rule to follow here is that you're only allowed to extend the base utility classes once so this is just a convenience for me to move some of this ugliness that you have from having too many of them in, in these um, 
this utility class in this in the HTML and simply lifting that that ugliness into a separate file. My development process is still that I always start by making my compositions using these utility classes, but when I see that I can actually refactor this into something a little bit more readable, I do I actually make a component file that extends the the things that are in the HTML, and then this becomes a, a just slightly a slightly amount you know a little bit more clean. And yeah, that this is a, it's a fairly efficient way. It's a fairly good way of uh, making uh, like building web applications. You don't have to go this far, but utility classes do absolutely have a pretty strong use case when we're doing CSS development. So I hope you found this useful. Have a great day.